All right, we got our final notes video of uh, section 7-2. This is going to be our page 9 notes. And again, this is something, and as you'll see, that 7-2 is really a refresher of all the skills that are needed um, to be able to complete 7-3 when the time comes when we get into our graphing here. All right, so we're going to do a little guided practice here, just reminding ourselves of how we generally solve a system of equations. In this case, what's going to happen is, again, because of the unit we're in, once we get through some of the solving, you're going to see that we're solving... Uh, equations that have x to the thirds or x to the fourths in the case of the first individual practice and that's why uh, this section pops back up here in unit 7. So um, when we have two uh, like a system of equations and they're both written in terms of one variable we can instantly substitute and that's going to be pretty much where we leave it for uh, the purpose of our algebra 2 course. So I'm going to uh, substitute. That's kind of the first step here. And I'm going to take my 12x squared plus 36x, and I'm going to plug it in for the other y. How can I do that? Well, it's because that's what y is equivalent to in this equation. When I do that, I get 12x squared plus 36x equals 9x to the third plus 12x squared. Okay. Now, you have some choices here, okay? Um, but basically, we have a multiple x's with different exponents. When that's the case, really our only option here is to set this equation equal to zero and, uh, and then talk about maybe how we can solve. In this case, we're going to factor. So uh, second step, we need to set this equation equal to zero. Okay. The goal here for me would be to keep my, uh, my biggest exponent term, in this case the 9x to the third. I'd like to keep that positive, so I'm going to take these two and use the inverse operation to basically bring them over here. Now it actually just so happens that our x squareds are going to be gone from both sides. We end up with an x to the third and an x term. Again, two terms that contain a variable. When that's the case, factoring will be the way to go. This only has two terms, so we're not thinking of this as a three-term quadratic, but let's check for GCF, which is always the first step of factoring. Both of these numbers are divisible by 9. These each share a variable as well, and x to the first is the lowest exponent, which means our GCF is going to be 9x. So I'm going to pull out that 9x. How do I know what remains of those terms? Divide. I get x squared minus 4. Remember, we still have this equation set equal to zero. Okay. Now, you've one of two things we can do here. Okay. I would suggest continuing to factor here. Okay. Just to make sure we're factoring this as full and as far as we can go. Remember, we can factor the difference of two squares. This being a perfect square, this a perfect square, and a minus sign. So again, in previous notes, we have factored x squared minus 4, x and x. 2 and 2, and there's no middle term here, so it should make a lot of sense. We need a one positive and one negative. Okay. After we have our three factors, or however many factors that come from this, uh, we're going to use the zero product property to solve for x. So I'm going to set this equal to zero, our GCF. I'm going to set our two binomial factors equal to zero. And I should get three solutions here. X equals zero, X equals negative two, and X equals two. Many of our students will fall into the trap of solving for X so much that they forget what type of problem this is. This is a system of equations. We also have Y's. Another clue would be that we're asking you to write your solution as an ordered pair, and to do that we need X's and Y's. So our final step here is going to be to plug in each x value to get its corresponding y value and then list our solutions as ordered pairs. Okay. 
You can pick either equation at the top to plug our answers back into. Okay, so I'm just going to do the I'm going to do the bottom one, so I don't have to cube anything. I don't know if that really uh, matters a whole lot, but let's plug in our x equals zero. If I plug in x equals zero to that bottom equation, this one should be pretty easy. Each of the terms has a zero. Our y would be zero. Zero squared, zero multiply. This is calculator work here. Okay. Um, and then we're going to plug in our next solution of x equals negative 2. And our other final solution of x equals 2. We're going to do some simple math here. Negative 2 squared is 4. We get 48 here. This is a negative 72. We get a negative 24 for our solution that would go with the x equals negative 2. This is going to be 4, 48 again, plus 72. This ends up being 120. And we're going to list our answers as ordered pairs. Our 0 for our x led to a 0 for y. Our negative 2 for x led to a negative 24 for y. Our 2 for x led to a 120 for y. A lot of work, three solutions. Again, kind of number of solutions. We had an x to the third. Makes a lot of sense that we had three different solutions to this. What would those solutions represent? Well, if we graphed both of these, feel free to open up Desmos or throw it into a graphing calculator if you really want. These would be the three locations in which these two graphs intersected. Remember, that's what it means to have a solution to a system of equations. Go ahead, give the next two a shot in your individual practice. Check in with your teacher to check.